Hello everybody. Blood pressure is a severe problem in dentistry. Many a times, patient does not give the history of blood pressure. He does not know that he is a hypertensive patient. And also during examination, when we measure his blood pressure through his fibromanometer, his blood pressure is often within the range of 140-90. But in subclinical cases of hypertension, the emergency arises when the blood pressure shoots during the procedure or after the procedure and it becomes more than 140 by 90 mm of Hg. The reason of increase in this blood pressure is secondary hypertension, subclinical hyper or hypothyroidism, apprehension, white coat fear or anxiety. So today I will talk about the measures a dentist can take interoperatively and postoperatively to manage this blood pressure crisis. The first thing which a dentist should do is to take a proper blood pressure measurement. To properly measure a blood pressure, Ask the patient to sit quietly and relax for at least 5 minutes. Then preferably use a sphygmo manometer or a multipara monitor to measure the blood pressure. Ask the patient to keep his feet parallel to the floor. Place the BP apparatus at the level of the heart of the patient and measure at least 2 readings consecutively at the gap of 2 minutes. Use the cuff of the BP apparatus which and circles at least 80% of the arm of the patient. So now the question is when actually a blood pressure becomes a problem for a dentist? Well, when we start the procedure, sometimes the blood pressure of a patient which is unknown hypertensive patient is most commonly within the range of 140 by 90 mm of Hg. But due to various reasons like stress, anxiety or any secondary reasons of non-essential hypertension, the blood pressure of the patient shoots to 160 by 100 and it makes a very problematic scene when you are doing extraction. So now the question arises how to manage the blood pressure crisis after extraction in dental clinic. Suppose you have done an extraction and the bleeding is not stopping from the extraction socket even after the completion of normal bleeding time that is 6 minutes. In this case. Immediately replace the normal pressure gauze from the socket and put a adrenaline soaked gauze and apply compression. And then after this, measure the blood pressure of the patient. If the blood pressure of the patient is 10 to 20 mm of Hg more than the standard blood pressure, then start drugs. So the first choice of oral antihypertensive drug which needs to be given is tablet nicardipine. Nicardipine is a calcium channel blocker. It should be given in a dosage of 5 to 15 mg depending upon the weight and the condition of the patient. The second drug of choice for this emergency situation is metoprolol, which is basically a beta adenoceptor blocker. It should be given in a dosage of 1.25 mg to 5 mg depending upon the weight and the situation of the patient. The third drug and very common drug and very safe drug is amlodipin. Amlodipin is basically a calcium channel blocker. It should be given at a dosage of 5 to 10 mg depending upon weight and the situation of the patient. If these drugs does not lower the blood pressure of the patient, it is basically necessary to give patient a combination of another drug which is a central leak acting agent known as clonidine. The preferable dose of clonidine is 0.1 or 0.2 mg. So if the blood pressure of the patient is very much high, you need to give a combination of 2 or 3 antihypertensive drugs as a regimen to control the blood pressure. If the blood loss is very much high, you need to give IV solution to compensate the blood loss. Once the blood pressure of the patient becomes controlled and the blood loss is stopped, you can refer the patient to general physician for further drug management of hypertension.